Please welcome to the stage, Melanie Hamlet! I move around a lot, so to get all this out of the way. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, I'm the least glamorous person I know, so I'm surprised that I, they let me write for glamour. But anyway, um, so, um, I was sitting in the uh, a memory care center with my dad, surrounded by a bunch of southern old ladies, uh, and it was dinner time. And uh, one of the nurses, Derek, goes to my dad, "Well, Mr. Bob, are you ready for your Brussels sprouts?" And my dad, my dad was like, "Hell no, I'm not eating that bullshit," you know. And and Derek laughs, and like the other nurses laugh, and like. Because he's like the only man there, and it's like the South, and people don't cuss in the South, or a lot of people don't cuss in the South. It's not proper. And um, and uh, so <laughs> Mary is sitting across from my dad. Actually, my dad also used to be a, sail a sailor, or like a, a, in the Navy, so he always justifies cussing. Well, I just cuss like a sailor because I was a sailor. Anyway, uh, so Mary is one of the residents who's sitting across the table, and she goes into one of her loops. Oh, nobody loves me. Everybody leaves me. Nobody loves like this. Ugh. And my dad gets so annoyed. He goes, "You're right. Nobody does like you because you're an asshole." <laughs> and uh, Derek is like, "Oh, Miss Mary, Mr. Bob's just pulling your leg." He goes, "No, she's an asshole." And uh, so they have to separate them. Um, my dad goes back to his throne or his chair, you know, in front of the TV, and he eats his dinner by himself. Well, with me watching football, which is basically our whole <laughs> lifetime dynamic. Um, and uh, and I'm like, you don't really like Miss Mary much, do you? And he goes, no, why? What are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, well, you just called her an asshole. He goes, I did? I'm like, yeah, you did. And he's like, well, that's something an asshole would say. And I'm like, mm-hmm. And he looks at me and he's like, yeah, because he knows he's an asshole. I know he's an asshole. That's how he's always been. Um, and then he like looks over at me and he goes, Melanie, I love you. You're such a good daughter. I'm so proud of you. My ass hurts. And that's his loop. He says that like every three minutes at the memory care center. I love you, man. My ass hurts. So that's like his thing. Um, now he, but he actually has been saying, I love you, I'm proud of you, you're a good daughter my whole life. Um, but I never really believed him, really, up until recently, because I didn't really know him that well. Like, he left, uh, you know, my parents got divorced when I was like four, so I didn't really see my dad much. It was just like some weekends, like Christmas, and then family vacation. So most of my, like, knowledge of my dad is through family vacation, <laughs> So as a kid, family vacation looked like this. We would go to like some beach and my dad would literally spend the entire week inside in the hotel room watching CNN or football, eating Oreos, drinking like shitty wine um, and becoming friends with the maid. Like the maids love my dad <laughs> always. And me and my sister would go out to the pool and entertain ourselves. And then sometimes he would like take us to go-karts, but he would never like ride the go-karts. He would just like give us the money and sit on a bench and watch us. And uh, so I kind of got the feeling like over time that it's not like he wants to spend time with us. It's almost like he's doing time, you know, like doing what he's got to do, you know. And um, and so as, as I got older, like once I was a, a kid, I was always trying to play. But as I got older, I just really wanted to be near this man. So in my teenage years, I would like watch football all the time with him. And I fucking hate football. I still hate football. Uh, and I would watch movies I was like that I really didn't care about, like Urban Cowboy and uh, Officer and a Gentleman. Like, he was in the Navy. He loves that movie. Uh, probably wasn't appropriate for me at the age, but whatever. Um, and, uh, and then at night, I would stay up. Like, he's a night owl, and he would just, you know, stay up until 2 in the morning. My sister and my stepmom would go to bed. And I would just stay up with him just to be near him. And 
And he's kind of fun when he's drunk. You know, he'd be like funny. But then like he goes into like sad dad mode and he starts after like 10 o'clock, he stops being funny and he just gets sad. And he would always be like bitch about his dad and how his dad didn't love him. And I mean, I heard the same story every night. I could almost cue like, here come the tears, like, bam, you know. And, uh, and you know, as I got older, especially as like more of a teenager, I'm just like, fuck this dude. Like, I started getting pissed because I'm like, I just want to be like, well, at least your dad didn't leave, you know. And so I started getting resentful that I'm like his free therapist. I could have gone to bed, but I'm like codependent. So <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> truth. <laughs> uh, anyway. So then as an adult, I'm still kind of like, this resentment is building. So when we go on family vacation as an adult, like things, I like, piss me off more. So for instance, when we go out to dinner, he hits on the waitress, all right? Now I was a waitress many times in my life and I fucking hate that. I hate it when men hit on me in front of their wives or their children. I'm like, (laughs) anyway. And like every time I'd order food, he'd be like, uh... Well, that's a big salad, Melanie. You know, make fun of what I'm eating. He's like criticizing it. And I'm like, okay, steak and fries. Like, and the thing is, I had actually been to a, like an eating disorder treatment center in high school for 30 days inpatient that his insurance had paid for. And he never learned to not make comments about what I'm eating because he's kind of clueless like that. So clueless that he would make really crazy um, jokes Like, you shouldn't really make in front of your daughters or to your daughters. For instance, (laughs) when we showed up on family vacation, uh, once me and my sister, we'd come from New York. We had our, like, the bellboy and our our suitcases. And he was, uh, he, oh, (laughs) we knocked on the hotel door and he opened it up and he goes, like, literally like this, he goes, hey, I didn't order two hookers. (laughs) It's okay, you can laugh, it's hilarious. it is. It's so fun. It's so wrong. It's right. <laughs> anyway, um, and my sister and I are like, <laughs> and the bellboy's like, <laughs> <"Why?"> <laughs> um, so that's like family vacation was always fun, but like stressful. And I was always like angry and like fucking a lot of dudes at night after they went to bed. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got fingered on so many places. Uh, anyway, there's a few risk stories about that. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, so things changed, though, when my sister got married, right? Because when you invite people into your family, like, that changes the whole dynamic, right? So she got to bring her husband on family vacation, but always single Melanie's got no plus one, so they let me bring my friend Jessica. <laughs> and uh, so family vacation with Jessica and my sister's husband changed everything because, like, all of a sudden, like, we... <laughs> I just started to see him in a different light. I'd also warned her. I was like, my dad's a total asshole. Like, you're going to see. I'm sorry. Anything. You know, I like apologized for him before she came. None of my friends had ever met my dad. And this is like a 10 day vacation. So like, but she's laughing at everything he says, like the jokes that I'm so tired of. Like, she's like, oh, <laughs> you know, and and like we went out to dinner one night, for instance, and he's a total slob and he spilled olive oil all down his Freethinker shirt. Um, so he wears this Freethinker shirt. Uh, he, it, it's a, he also wears a Freethinker hat. And it says, like, he's worn it every for 20 years or something. It's ridiculous. Anyway, it says Freethinker and then Freethinker. And he was like, oh, ma- fuck, I ruined my favorite shirt, you know? And uh, Actually, he didn't say I. He said, Daddy ruined my f- his favorite shirt. My dad speaks in third person. <laughs> Just like George Costanza, but like all the time. Like, I rarely see the, hear the pronoun I. It's like, Daddy this, that. It's, we're, it's the South. You're allowed to say Daddy. I know that makes sound weird. So, you know. Anyway, um, well, that's what we call our father, Daddy. Anyway, um, Daddy ruined his favorite shirt. And my stepmom chimes in. She's like, well, you have like four more back in the hotel. And he was like, that's true. And I'm like, well, you have five free thinker shirts here? And my, st- my stepmom's like, yeah, he found this on the internet. And he ordered like five of them and sweatshirts. And it's all he wears now. And I'm like, why free thinker? And he's like, because that's what daddy is. And I'm like... Okay, um, so and Jessica thinks this is hilarious, and I'm starting to think this is kind of funny. My dad's like a weird dude. <laughs> um, 
Is it, you know, you didn't realize until you see someone else like react to it. So for instance, we'd be driving and he'd be, <laughs> he's the worst front seat driver. Not even, the, <laughs> my stepmom's driving and he'd be like, don't hit that lady, you know? And she's like, I see the lady. I'm not, don't hit the dog. And she's like, I'm not hitting the bad dog. You know, like always back and forth. And I'm like, by the way, you're not one to talk. You've literally totaled five cars and almost killed people at the recycling center when you thought a ghost possessed your car. And he was like, it surged, I swear. <laughs> My dad has wrecked two cars and he claims that the engines got possessed and surged. <laughs> and he really believes this. And Jessica's like, ah, ha, 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 you know? And I'm like, God, my dad is such a weird dude. I just started to see him differently. And then he also would like compliment me all the time. Like he'd always say, I love you, blah, blah, blah. But like, I never believed that shit. But he'd tell Jessica that how much he loves me. And he's like, I'm so proud of her. Like she's done more in the 35 years than I've done in 70. Like she's my wild child. And just would go on and on. And I'm like, well, God damn, maybe he actually believes this shit if you're saying it to someone else. <laughs> it's just weird. To you. I don't know why I didn't believe it if you said it to me. And at the end of the, the vacation, Jessica was like, I can't believe you warned me. Like, I thought your dad was going to be like a monster. <laughs> like, you made him out to be this awful person. I think he's pretty cool. And I started thinking about it, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm becoming my dad. Uh, except instead of having like a daughter who's a codependent free therapist, I just pay a real therapist to bitch about my dad all the fucking time. I bitch to all my friends. I'm my dad. I blame, I blamed all my problems on my dad. All of them. Anyone who would listen to me, I'm, even at the treatment center, we spent 30 days trying to figure out why Melanie throws up. Must be her dad. I mean, like th this was the conclusion that we'd all drawn. And... I started, I was like, I don't want to be just like him sitting in a chair at 70 bitching about my father like him. And his grand, my grandfather, his dad, I liked him. So maybe like, maybe his vision's a little skewed. So I decided like, I'm going to try an experiment because I was still pretty self-destructive at this time. Perhaps maybe instead of like <laughs> telling myself this story that he's a shitty fucking dad and he sucked, maybe I could like throw out that tape and try something new. Because what I realized is like, when you hate your parents, like every time you see their, their reflection in the mirror, you kind of hate part of yourself. <laughs> like your DNA is made up of these fucking people. And when you hate them, it's kind of like cutting almost. And this was a, an experiment, but I tried it. And so I made a list of all the things he'd done for me. He taught me, uh, I mean, he paid for college. Like I'm not strapped in student debt to say he didn't have to, but he did. Uh, he taught me to appreciate traveling. He taught me a lot. I have a whole list. I'm not going to say it for y'all, but one of the things he gave me was the ability to laugh at fucked up stuff, like calling your daughter a hooker. <laughs> um, and like, I laughed through all, like every shitty thing that's ever happened to me. I laughed through because of his sense of humor. He taught me that, right? So this kind of started changing my life and my relationship with him. I actually started getting along with him because I wasn't just like, fuck you. I wasn't like a little girl or a teenager. I was just like an adult who was like, okay, I'm going to give you a second. Just clean slate, throw out the old bad dad tape, new tape. It's called Good Dad. And uh, we went on family vacations, had a lot of fun. Uh, my dating life got better. Oh, shocker. <laughs> I'm not dating assholes anymore because I don't like hate men. Uh, anyway, um, Funny how that works. Anyway, um, and so things are going well. And then I get a call. I'm living in L.A. at the time. My stepmom calls and she goes, so there's, your dad's being really weird. And I think there's a real problem. <laughs> like he'd already been, he's just weird anyway, but he'd been like forgetting things. He forgot my birthday, but whatever. He's also, he's a clinical narcissist. <laughs> so like he's, <laughs> that's not really a big deal. He forgot my birthday. Anyway, she's like, he forgot the word milk. He calls it that white stuff. And I was like, well, maybe he's just being lazy because he's also lazy. Uh, and she's like, well, he forgot the name of the cat and the word for cat. He calls bogey the animal. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now that's kind of weird. And then she's like, and he forgot the word for wine and forgets to drink it every night now. And I'm like, hold on. Oh, God, we got a problem. So we're kind of in denial still about this being Alzheimer's. But we decided to go on a family vacation just to, just to check it out. Bad idea. Never take someone with Alzheimer's out of the country to a place they've never been where they remember nothing. Uh, I will, I'll save you the details, except like 
the last night we were at dinner. I mean, I pushed him in a wheelchair. He's falling over. The last night at dinner, we're, we're on this beach and sand and like tiki torches and like a, literally a guy playing a, vi- a violin next to our table. My dad forgets to chew steak. You know, he just, I'm going to He fucking chokes and I have to do the Heimlich maneuver on him to save his life. And then when I'm done, I sit down and I'm traumatized. The whole table's dramatized. And, and we're like, Daddy, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. Why? He forgets that he choked. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, my God. And it was the first time I realized my dad's going to die. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know when. The thing about Alzheimer's is you don't know how long it lasts. It could be one year. It could be 15. Like, it's a lot. It's not like cancer where sometimes they give you, a, like, a time frame. They're like, I don't know. All of them were like, ugh. So, um, so I decided that I'm going to spend, like, I had planned to move to Europe, but I, I postponed that plan for a year. Because, again, I'm not going to give up my whole life to, like, wait for my dad to die. <laughs> but I wanted to, like, give a, a good quality year of good memories, right? So we take, we put him in a memory care center because he cannot, he, he, my stepmom can't take care. He falls all the time. We call the fire department like every day to pick him up because he's a big man. So I was like, man, he needs help. So I go to the memory care center, which is kind of like eternal vacation in this weird way. He gets to be inside all day watching TV, hanging out with like people who are kind of like treat him like the maids do. They're like, hey, we love you. Like, tell us your stories, you know? Um, And the difference, though, is he's not angry anymore. Like, he doesn't bitch about his dad. He doesn't even mention his dad, ever. He doesn't mention anybody that pissed him off. And every time I would tell people, like, yeah, oh, my dad's got Alzheimer's, they're like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is the happiest he's ever been. He can't remember what pisses him off. His, I'm not, Alzheimer's is hard. And, like, yeah, he tried to, like, choke a couple nurses and whatever. But other than that... That, that was a legitimate reason to be angry because they were, uh, anyway. But he's not angry at people. He's just like this Buddha, you know? He even let people rub his head. Anyway, um, he's a happy man. Um, and so, I, and I loved going and sitting next to him and watching fucking football. I hate, he didn't even know what was going on. I don't even know if he knows they're watching football, but I wanted to comfort him in something familiar. And he'd say his loop, you know, I love you. You know, you're a good daughter proud of you, <laughs> ass hurts, um, or like your feet are big. Every once in a while, he'd say something like that. Anyway, um, so about a year ago, I got a call from, uh, from my stepmom. He died suddenly, not of Alzheimer's, of a blood clot, which is kind of like the <laughs> jackpot of death, like, you know, like, no, like, <laughs> you know, like, that's it. <laughs> that's all, folks. <laughs> I'm not going to forget all the people I love and make them suffer. Anyway, um, so I went home to, to, to bury him and, uh, we had a military funeral for him. I don't suggest that for anybody. It's really cold, short, like they're, they're militant, right? They're like, you know, like you go in, it's like, you have like 10 minutes. Like we had no flowers. We ordered one beautiful bouquet. It didn't fucking show up. Um, like we had, like, I was like stressed for time. Cause they're just like, we got one right after you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, so, like, we did the whole thing, and then they, like, folded the flag and handed it to my stepmom and then played taps, you know. And uh, and then they just rolled him out the door, you know. I'm like, this was so not the kind of funeral I would have had. But anyway, so then we go and we pick out his headstone, and they, they have, like, a limit on how many characters you can have. It's like something, you know, a normal place. You could be like, oh, my God, he's a part. I mean, we never, anyway, I'm not going to go to that. But, like, they wouldn't let us say everything we wanted to. So we had to, like, barter with the military tombstone guy. We're like, come on, 23 characters, 23, come on. So we got on the, on the tombstone, Robert Hamlet, proud father, because that was his biggest achievement in life, loving husband, free thinker. <laughs> <laughs> and when we got out of this place, we came out, and they were, like, driving off my dad's body, and a fucking car pulls up, and the flowers show up. And I just die laughing, all of us do. We're like, of course, the flowers are 23 minutes late to your fucking funeral, you know? And I thought, oh, my God, his sense of humor is in me. It's never leaving me. I have this man that I love now with me for the rest of my life, and I can laugh through tragedy and laugh at his funeral 
So the new loop for me is I'm a good daughter. He was a good man. He was a loving father. <laughs> My ass does not hurt, though. <laughs> Thank you.